In the 20th and 21st century, it has been full of bloodshed. According to Professor Carter, he says that the 20th century has been the most bloodiest century ever. More blood has been spilled in this century than in any other time in known history. And then they say religion causes wars. More people have died under the banner of secular ideologies rather than the banner of religion from a numbers game. The root terror is actually the state of the ideological type of terror because far more innocents have died. For example, Zbigniew Brzezinski in his publication Out of Control, Global Turmoil on the Eve of the 21st Century. It was published in 1993. He said lives have been deliberately extinguished by politically motivated carnage. And he gives us some numbers. The war dead alone in the 21st century, and just listen to this, the war dead alone for politically motivated reasons is 87 and a half million people. Not 3,911, which is wrong and we disagree with. Not around 60 people in 77 in the United Kingdom, which is wrong and we disagree with. But look at the real type of terrorism. For politically motivated via state terror, 87 and a half million people. I mean, even if you were doing a numbers game, you'd be shocked. How can you hide this? 87 and a half million people for politically motivated reasons via state backed entities. So what is the real terrorism? I mean, let's wake up. State terrorism is the terrorism. This whole war on terror is like a smoke screen in a way. If this is true that 87 and a half million people have died for politically motivated reasons via secular nations and states, then we need to start talking about what is the real terror. And the real terror here is without a doubt state-backed terrorism. And we saw this in Iraq, 1.2 million people dying. We saw this in Afghanistan, thousands dying. We saw this with the use of depleted uranium on the tips of bombs when they were bombing the Gulf. And it created like a covert nuclear weapon, if you like. There's still radiation clouds there. Still, there's DU dust in the atmosphere. Children are being born and, and they're deformed. They have no faces. They have no arms. So even just scratching the surface, you see the real terror is state terrorism. So look at this state terror. 87 and a, and a half million million innocent deaths for politically motiva motivated reasons in the 21st century. So, this is actually the real terrorism. It takes a five minute discussion to discuss what is terrorism and who's, who are the real terrorists, okay? And we've done that already. Yes, we know Muslims who do naughty things are wrong and we condemn this. But we have to call a spade and spade and look at the greatest terror which as we know by one of the definitions is the killing of innocents for politically motivated reasons. And we see 87 and a half million innocents via secular state, secular states and secular backed institutions. And as we know, there are many modern wars that we know of, especially in our lifetime. An example is the US and UK fighting for oil and strategic dominance in Iraq and Afghanistan. And even the support of Libya, I would argue, was obviously more of a European project with the French and the British because we see that strategically Libya is very important 
because it's an access to the resources of Africa. It gives a good channel to Africa and also because of oil. So let's not be under any kind of illusion that when one of the state secretaries or a representative of the United States of America, when the UN came together to announce this, when they said we're doing it to prevent innocent lives. I mean, that's, that's a joke. I mean, I mean, to believe they did it for innocent lives and why aren't they in other countries that are destroying other people? I mean, it's, it's, it's duplicit. It's because of American interests. And this is what we hear. They're, even very, they're very bold about this. When you hear Obama and others they say American interests, they even read some of the narratives. Look at the news. They always say what's in British interests, what's in American interests. So, you know, don't be under any illusion this is to do with humanitarian effort. Because it's part of the Sharia Jihad. Jihad is a liberating concept. Now, I'm not going to talk about the spiritual type of Jihad. The Jihad of the Nafs. Which is very important and we know this. Because if you do Jihad and you know it for Allah's sake, you're in hell. And you die, you go straight to hell. So that means there must have been a jihad of the nafs going on before. That you did it solely for the sake of Allah. So we know this. But I'm going to take this aside because it's more of a political discussion. The type of jihad we're going to talk about is when Muslims go and fight. Now, jihad has been linked to terrorism. But we know when we look at the holistic nature of the Quran and Sunnah. Not just one hadith or just one verse. But we look at all of them together in a holistic nature. We take all the corpus of reference material in the Qur'an and Sunnah, we know that this cannot be further from the truth. Jihad is when Muslims go to war, and it has its rules as we discussed. And there are two types of jihad, defensive and progressive. So this is why we have to talk about now the Qur'an and fighting. So the Qur'an does talk about fighting, talks about jihad, and the language is quite emotive. The language of the Qur'an is, Allah loves those who fight in His cause, Smite their necks, kill them wherever you find them. Inna Allah You know, it's like, oh my God, what book is this? Yeah. The only reason we have killed this man today is because Muslims are dying daily by a British soldier, and this British soldier is one is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth by Allah. I want to comment on what happened today in London, in Woolwich, where two men killed a man with machetes. I want to condemn this act. It's an act of criminality. I also want everybody to know very clearly and decisively that these men do not represent any community or any religion. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is a statement regarding the acts of criminality which took place today in Woolwich. Two men who conducted these acts of criminality are not from our community. They do not represent us in any shape or form. And I want to highlight that the far right is going to take full advantage of this situation and they're going to spread a lot of hatred about Islam and Muslims. This is something we have to be careful about. We condemn all acts of criminality, whether they take place in this country or in Syria or in Japan. So, we have to be clear on this, that these two men do not represent us in any shape or form. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.
When we start busting our guns, do you think the politicians are going to die? No, it's going to be the average guy like you and your children. 